um, we can do the introductions. So thank you everyone for joining. This is, uh, I'm Gretchen Wilkins. I'm the head of the architecture program here at Cranbrook Academy of Art. We're joined today by Vinnie Moss. It's fantastic to have you joining us for a lecture today. Thank you for, for making the time. Um, I'll just do a, a quick introduction and then I'll turn it over to Vinny. And then uh, for those who are attending, there's a Q&A chat link at the bottom. And we'll do some questions at, at the end. Um, and I'll be helping to moderate that. So, so feel free to drop those questions in when you have them and we'll, we'll, we'll pick them up at the end. Um, so Vinny Moss is a co-founder and principal architect of MVRDB. Moss alongside Jakob Van Ries and Natalie DeVries in 1993 and has established an international identity through a variety of buildings, cities, landscapes, um, all of which are innovative, experimental and theoretical. Over the past 25 years, Moss has been responsible for many award-winning projects, including the Dutch Pavilion at Expo 2000 in Hanover, in Hanover, Rotterdam's Market Hall, the Crystal Houses in Amsterdam, the Foot Mountain Public Library, and several master plans, including for Paris, Bordeaux, and Oslo. In 2017, Moss was appointed supervisor for Eindhoven City in the Netherlands. Um, he's also recently working on a project locally in Detroit, the Glass Mural Project, which I'm sure we'll see a bit of today. Um, and hopefully we can have, Vinny, have you visit when things are back sort of to normal and we can have you in person. It would be great to see that project and have you visit campus. Um, so thanks for joining us. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you uh, for introducing. Uh, nice to be with you. It's a year ago that I was, uh, uh, no, no. Uh, that I was indeed with you at the graduation show and um, uh, live at that moment and uh, seeing some of you. I'm still impressed by the, um, by the combination of, uh, say, art and something. So that, uh, is, uh, uh, that's the character of your, uh, of your school. And I think that uh, I can consider that as a specialism. So what I would like to do today is uh, uh, to share with you um, say some of my thoughts on art and the potential of art in the widest sense, uh, to look at it um, um, both from some projects that we do as uh, leading to um, like a, also the curation uh, of the, for the moment of the Biennales of uh, Manifesta that, we, uh, that we'll do. And that way I do hope that uh, you all, with all your hopefully different backgrounds, that somehow you find a way to, uh, to talk about it, about this uh, kind of specific uh, say, approach uh, towards uh, architecture, but also towards uh, sculpture or towards, say, uh, new media, etc. And there, is, there are things that are, that, that are connected among you. And, um, uh, and I see in these days, especially a moment that we need to use art and artists even much more than ever, uh, as they have a certain kind of uh, freedom uh, and uh, a very direct way of uh, criticism uh, and ultimately a, a level of uh, visual intellectualism that I think is uh, needed uh, and that compensates as a the polemic of our time, that compensates the, the fear that is, uh, somehow is, is happening, that uh, gives uh, hope and that uh, creates uh, direction uh, in this kind of, you know, I would say, indirect but um, uh, uh, therefore ultimately direct way i'm going to share uh, my uh, uh, share screen so that we can and i there it is what i like about these days about it, that i am very vulnerable while showing my things I, I, and i think it's just one of the ways of being personal uh, in that respect and to um to in a way compensate the lack of being there um, art and urbanism, I would like to call it, um, uh, as a relationship and uh, see, therefore, the tool of the collaboration uh, that I can, uh, and also it gives a perspective for art, namely it has a, a bigger scale, and for urbanism it gives uh, the potential of being concise, direct, and, uh, and understandable and conceptual in the end. It is, um, therefore, you can say it also in another way that uh, this lecture is about changing the city through culture and uh, I conceive art as a very direct uh, and if, uh, if not more um, concise um, say way of dealing with culture and um, 
So what, uh, how to do that, sorry. Um, this leads to, to also to an art of urbanism, I would say. And that is, um, urbanism at the moment is considered as planning, completely unsexy and completely uh, technological almost, um, or very, say, populistic or, and, and on the other hand, very distant as such, mainly done by people uh, uh, that are considered uh, as boring and um, and that have no appeal at such and that uh, it seems uh, very uh, very far away of we what we sometimes want to be. But on the other hand, they're super important, and urbanism is actually uh, more important these days. So I want to learn also from art, from artists. I will show you that in also in in the in the work uh, because there is a, uh, as I said already, it creates room. Not only space, but room, room for freedom, uh, room for critical, uh, the critical, uh, in that way, and because of that, um, the room also for the challenge of being intellectual, um, uh, and room ultimately for the conceptual. So you make something personal, but you give it to an audience uh, that can interpret it in a kind of a wider way, or say personalize with it in a wider way, and that's what I love. And uh, sometimes I should have gone to an art academy instead of uh, to a, a university of technology. I will do that through um, four visits uh, that I would like to take with you. Um, visits uh, that, um, um, that I cannot do sometimes now and because of COVID, but uh, like Detroit and some others like Manan I can do. So everyone has a kind of specific, specific potential, especially in these days, but hope to illustrate this, uh, this uh, relationship. Let's start with re Detroit. Uh, I, I, the plan was, in a way, to, uh, to visit you uh, when I would uh, visit also Detroit because of a project that we are uh, trying uh, to, uh, to make and hopefully it will be made in the coming half year. Um, it's an Eastern market. I, mean, I know Detroit already for a while, um, but uh, in, in, in this case, uh, I'm very happy to uh, contribute to Eastern market, which for me is a very important project in the kind of, say, resurrection of uh, Detroit and to uh, give a kind of D Detroit 3.0 after 1.0 and 2.0 and uh, to, to uh, imagine that as a, a place where uh, everything blends in from art to non-art, from collaboration to, to egoism, from uh, working to living, from um, um, industry towards, uh, say, service provision. I think that is a, it can be a blend, building, uh, if, if you are making it more open, if you can also turn it into, a, into a certain, not only into protectionism, because that will not help in Eastern market economically in the end, but that, then it can be an exemplary uh, part of Detroit, an example also for the wider world. Well, you know it by heart, right? so it's close to the city, and it's uh, uh, close to the next university uh, uh, and, and the next step towards it. It is a, a place where you go on Saturdays uh, to, um, to go to the market. It is also a place where, uh, where it's very colorful. It has the best canvas, I think, in the world, even although it competes with Marseille and pieces of Rotterdam, places that I would like to come back to it later in that way. Uh, with a superb, um, say, I would say almost like a museum that is uh, over there. And uh, some people say it's uh, temporary. Um, uh, it's definitely active. It is, um, it is um, it's, it's pulling people there. It's creating space for many and for many interpretations. And I somehow would like to contribute that. So we do have a, an, a client with a small plot uh, next, opposite Shed 3, and, uh, which is, as you can see on the right side, the existing building, well, used to be existing. And it's uh, uh, built, of course, in a specific epoch of time in, uh, in Detroit. And uh, then, as many of the buildings, it is not used already for a long time. It uh, has been transformed in, uh, in a canvas of, uh, of art. So what can we do if that is, uh, uh, we, it's hard to, to repair it. Uh, the, the foundations are not so good. And um, uh, it also is a wish to give a kind of spirit of a potential in, in that way and how to bring it from say only preservation to a kind of also housing new functions and also uh, celebrating a kind of innovation in art and in the permanence and in the temporariness of art. So this is uh, the first slide what is uh, happening. Uh, with the property line of the of the owner 
um, what um, he wishes to uh, to uh, to build, like uh, stores, but also uh, like uh, uh, offices slash housing uh, on top. What is interesting is uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, there's an alley uh, next door on both sides, so we could do that, use that to uh, push uh, the building a little bit uh, away to create. Uh, uh, another alley. I love the alley uh, of the of the area, but also to to think in terms of scale and to uh, so to not to pop up uh, as a big element, but to somehow push it away. Setbacks, balconies. You can hang out of the window and of the balconies and form part of the street life op opposite set three, and then end, end up also with a pavilion, say the third block on uh, on top, to imagine a kind of uh, roof life. I think that would be one of the key factors besides the street life also that the uh, Eastern market gets this kind of roof life feeling. So uh, if this is then say the volume that we can imagine, so simply using the format of the neighbors, but then stack them on top of that a little bit to lead to, um, to a mixage of program and, uh, and balconies and uh, terraces. Then the question is what, what, what can we somehow uh, petrify and glorify and energize the art? So we do that in a couple of ways. Let's see, we conceive that building and we work uh, therefore with different artists to conceive every building as an entity for an artist um, um, uh, that can and we use basically glass and we ask him to uh, interfere uh, in the glass, um, whatever is behind it, from offices to housing. We don't care. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the person that lives in the house also sees the art as a kind of a rose window and to uh, to give a proposal for that. So let's start from the, with the foundation, uh, which used to be like this. So we asked this uh, artist also to, uh, to work again uh, with him, but to, um, and then we photographed uh, all uh, uh, say parts of his work uh, that was there uh, before and started to, uh, to imagine actually a timeline uh, where uh, we say uh, use the original facade, go through the uh, the nineties and the, the zeros when uh, the history of that that part was uh, covered by another kind of paint, and uh, also to and then his painting uh, by denial, uh, what a name in that way is to have that on board uh, from seventeen onwards, and uh, then see that with all the uh, uh, say the facades how that could be imagined. And uh, so he interfered in, the way with, in this ways uh, to add as a kind of sticker um, his, uh, his, his contribution on all the sides and he turns it into a three-dimensional layered uh, piece of art that will be printed into the glass. And that uh, uh, looks like this. Uh, uh, then you have the second layer looks like that uh, uh, um, in a way. And uh, then with all the sides, it becomes uh, this kind of feeling. So sometimes we fade out uh, the, the paint and become turn it into windows following his uh, instructions and then it uh, gets this kind of uh, frozen appearance. That's, this, uh, that's number one. So it's a, like a panoramic painting, panoramic from inside and panoramic from outside that's there. The next uh, block is uh, done uh, uh, with another artist and uh, we, I show here, who has a complete other kind of uh, um, idea what he would like to do, what they would do, like to do um, by making a painting and allow windows as kind of clouds uh, in the painting uh, and therefore to have that addressed. And that leads to this kind of transparency. So imagine that you have a, an office there and you have to crawl sometimes to look out and sometimes you have to jump, but it creates a, a, a you're always interacting with the art and uh, you're popping up, I would say, in this pop-up art. And that leads then to the third uh, project uh, where uh, this becomes a complete canvas. So here we would like to make a kind of beacon in, uh, in, uh, in this market to, to show basically what artists can do every year and be part of the festival on the roof terrace uh, that can be sprayed uh, over, this, uh, over this glass. So this could be like this. And uh, that turns it, I think, into a contribution uh, in a couple of ways, in uh, having extra program, having extra mini blocks in this uh, Eastern Harbor uh, uh, market area and to add, uh, to have different say, and added uh, artists uh, involved in this operation. And you see some images how that will look like when you uh, uh, look around. So uh, how uh, this is the view uh, from 
uh, uh, shed three uh, towards it and uh, it hopes to inspire that is what it is it is a it's a little bit out of the box although it's a, a, although it's a box but therefore it wants to uh, hopefully conceptualize um, um, uh, Eastern Market District uh, by its uh, mixture of functions and this uh, mixture of artists that could be over there. And how in the evening it would look like as a beacon, as a lantern that uh, uh, that's visible from our sites and becomes like a safe haven in, uh, in the area. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next step and, and, and here a direct uh, relationship with artists uh, opens possibilities. I would have never designed uh, a facade like that, you can say. And it uh, is also like, I, I'm like almost like an urbanist. I, I give pieces away from for others. I'm not this kind of, hopefully this kind of architect that is so selfish that wants to do everything on himself. That leads mostly to very boring buildings, to be honest, in that way. Because there's no input from voices. So let me then bring you to my town, to uh, the place where I'm now here, and uh, in Rotterdam, uh, which is uh, somewhere in the Netherlands. It's a bit Rotterdamish. Uh, sorry, it's a bit Detroitish. sorry, in that uh, uh, way. Now, uh, also a bit of a, like a rough city, and, and very mixed population in that way. It used to be uh, also beautiful, like as you can see on this image, um, uh, and that uh, somehow there was this bombardment in the, uh, in the war, that uh, that changed the city and flattened it out and uh, and then you can have uh, well it's a, it's a bit of a detroit landscape somehow and it's like what are we going to do uh, in this place somehow i find rotterdam nice and i, I, I love to live there that's why i like uh, also detroit to hang out because it gives space it's not like a place where everything is um uh, say overprotected or directed towards one direction only. It, uh, it is like a place to fantasize and to make, uh, a, a give it into a direction. Rotterdam has done this a little bit longer now than, than Detroit in a way. So in a way that it makes things and then the next uh, project reacts to that. It's the, you, you see a bridge of Ben van Berkel and Rem Koolhaas reacts to that or Norman Foster on the right and, and um, say the whole, the whole gang is uh, is there to uh, to make the next thing, but they do it in somehow I think in a nice way. They respect their neighbor and they give it something extra. Extra. It is as if we I can call this the Rotterdam collection is uh, is happening as a as a model. And if you walk around you and you see that diversity, I think it's also a model for our planet almost that you want to create diversity uh, between human beings in terms of taste, in terms of uh, uh, different, say, populations, in terms of uh, exchange also, and, but also in terms of animals and plant life in the end. Biodiversity is cool, I would say. So how to do that then in the next step? So I, I show you uh, three projects uh, that, that, that participate at four, actually. So we started a small, uh, cute, this is uh, opposite my house uh, almost, where for a friend, um, family we uh, extended his home uh, added simply uh, a village for himself uh, on top of an existing uh, roof you see it under construction and um, uh, and then that leads to that this, this is a, a UNESCO area pro so protected but UNESCO allowed us to uh, to make a classic shape on top of it but then um, well I didn't tell the, to paint it in a certain color I only put the rail color uh, underneath um, and the color has been selected with a say Rotterdam artist to celebrate basically uh, to stand out to make a voice in between uh, uh, the bottom and the top in between uh, sky or heaven and uh, Rotterdam hell and it was like uh, 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 creating this uh, perspective aside so here how you can walk from the house into the different houses uh, uh, where this kind of inhabitants uh, the kids are living and they go to each other have a nice conversation with each other. Uh, parents go up, have their uh, room. They go out to, through the shower and meet each other on this, uh, say, in this garden. And I, I, what it becomes when you use it in this way, like Eve Klein almost, so what an artist. And it becomes almost like an abstraction. It becomes a, a, a place where, uh, because of this um, um, monocolor and all its details, uh, because then avoid details, but, uh, um, but also 
add details like the furniture. It somehow becomes like a tool or like an instrument that says, here I am. I am the observer of the city. I uh, bring everything together almost in the sky, in the sky blue uh, uh, environment. And if you then go out a little bit to the far, then you can see this. And people start to wonder, is this Photoshop or real? But in a, uh, it is a message that comes over the roof of, of Rotterdam to say, I'm there. I want to say that it's possible to grow, that you can build on top. It's an invitation to build on top of the roofs. And by that, more people can live in Rotterdam. More, uh, it, the, the city becomes better. It, it is uh, like an extra layer in the city. And we don't go into the landscapes to ruin our landscapes, especially in the Netherlands a serious issue to avoid suburbanization. This has become the emblem of that operation. Uh, you can see it from every tower here in the distance, uh, hopefully for you, you can see it happening. You can see it from uh, Google Earth, but also from uh, the planes uh, that direct uh, the plane towards uh, Schiphol Airport. And, um, uh, and, and it is yelling that even with 40, 40 square meters, a building can give a message and can say, that I want to be urbanistic. I want to invite people to do more. And that is what's now happening. There is a new law uh, in uh, Rotterdam that you can build two stories on top of it. Just go on and the city becomes better is what it wants. Second uh, episode of say, uh, the, where I see the blue house as a, as, as, a, as a conceptual approach, almost like a piece of art that helps to uh, convince and that uh, points in direction. The market hall is another way of dealing uh, with art. So it was the next building of us uh, uh, on this spot in the center of Rotterdam. See, uh, still uh, naked, exactly on this plot uh, uh, next to that church. And uh, where the wish was to make uh, uh, housing, um, 250 units, and uh, like a hall in between a market hall. And they said something, okay, can you do something cute, something like Barcelona with colors. We said, no, no, we are not going to do it. Let's, let's make the hall more important. Let's swap the whole um, uh, building so that you can have a bigger hall and monumentalize food. And I said, the need of good food and healthy food in these day days. And uh, that, that, uh, the, the, the developer said, yeah, nice. Uh, uh, yeah, I said, yeah, nice because you get more penthouses so you can sell better. And uh, yeah, but uh, they have no view, the penthouses. Okay, okay, we make a view like this by... Uh, pivoting it like that and uh, then he said yeah nice but it is an expensive structure uh, a lot of steel okay okay we bend it like romans and then you have a uh, perfect structure the cheapest structure in a way social housing can do it but then he said where's my lift i cannot put it in and so we bend it back and then the building is basically uh, done and that's the, that's built and it uh, does two things it wants to be very rotter damage on the outside just living uh, as such, um, keeping the pavement of the area and clad it completely over all the houses and use the houses then for to celebrate the new market. So it's, you can say that this is our inverted Eastern market uh, um, as such. And uh, to use therefore also a painting uh, that, uh, that makes the interior glorify. And you want to go there is what it wants to say. I want to eat you, is this building also saying. And, I, and you want to eat the, the fruit and veggies that are there. So uh, and this is how an image is in, inside, how it's now used, how um, the, all the stalls are there, uh, how you can slaughter meat if you uh, like, how there's veggies. Or, um, people have food on the roofs of this uh, element to eat it also. And above it, uh, um, they you celebrate it with this cupola. And uh, uh, here you can sit and eat. You can walk around, go to the terraces on, uh, on top. And then this is the space that we uh, conceive. It is uh, what I call the, say the, the, the Rotterdam version of Michelangelo um, of the sixth and chapel. And uh, where I want to look into infinity somehow. So here with a uh, group of artists, uh, with punk artists, uh, uh, we developed this, uh, uh, this canvas and turned it into um, like a, a perspective on the future. Uh, so they made uh, uh, an enlargement of all the products that are there, some bigger and some smaller, created depth, uh, put towers in it for food production uh, and made a narrative of how this kind of explosion of uh, of uh, uh, food is helping us in, to think about the food. And in between is, are my windows and that where people live. 
and which have a kind of a feeling that if you sit on the terraces, you are uh, more or less covered by this uh, 11,000 square meter piece of art. And, uh, and then, but also see people eating in the windows or walking or going to the bathroom or going to, uh, 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 to the bedroom. And so it becomes like a very intimate in, in, in itself. And I think that is kind of nice. So here an image from also from the apartments, how, that is, how they conceive it. And they become like the watchers of, uh, of the market and uh, also the developer of the market that he has to control because this, uh, yeah, this 250 windows and people behind it uh, have a voice in uh, that way. So it becomes like a painting in the house, like here in the bedroom, um, uh, where it becomes the identity of the houses and they get gratuitely a piece of art in every room is what it says. Even you work next to the art. Uh, you can walk over the art on the top uh, uh, parts in it and you can play on top of the art and uh, look down here with your kids on the beauty of the market. So it somehow becomes a kind of cohesive operation. People are part of the market, not only inside, also the inhabitants uh, caress it and, uh, and, uh, and love it. And uh, the artwork is therefore so uh, kind of mitigating or helping that process in, in its way. So here's some details that okay? you want to make the facade then transparent so it's like a tennis racket that is hung there and here the details of the uh, the nature stone uh, the pavement of rotterdam that is going over the building into the into this kind of emblem uh, in that way so yes you can use housing to create more spaces that is what it says it's a mixture but also then it is uh, uh, helped by uh, uh, by the artwork that creates uh, like a destination uh, in uh, Rot in rotterdam you can see it also, it's like a tower that is bending over the market and, uh, and pops up uh, to create an address in uh, the city. It was uh, um, happily, very nicely uh, uh, yeah, awarded by people. There were many pictures that went over the, over the planet. Even the Lonely Planet uh, took it finally, Rotterdam, in its guidebook, um, uh, partly because of this. And uh, the Rotterdamers love to hang out next to that building to celebrate their wedding or to be together with friends from everywhere. So that um, somehow it helped uh, to, uh, to be more together. Third episode in Rotterdam. So this is a very small piece of say art that uh, we try to do ourselves. It was a sketch uh, that, uh, that I made at a certain moment that next to the central station to, to make a stair that pe would people bring up to the roofs and that to celebrate basically the view over the, over the city as such. So this was the sketch that we then further developed uh, in a time <coughs> where there is a lot of, uh, say, fear in stations in Europe because of uh, terrorism, and uh, how to uh, to make then that kind of access to uh, to uh, our uh, roofs and make it public in that way, not going into inside, take a lift after, no, 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 just go out and not do that. <coughs> and in the, in the end, we could make it, and and that was uh, with the help of the mayor uh, to find, find anti-terrorism measurements. Uh, which I not, can explain further about, but then it opened up and I was surprised uh, by heart that such a small piece of building that becomes like a useful element that people queued up to go up and going up only like a stair. What, uh, what does it bring to, to that the kind of destination? What can I see there? But uh, the feeling of going up was already so important that, uh, uh, and also to look down to see to the queue uh, that was there and to celebrate with each other basically the view over the city that was what what this basically would could give and then uh, here you made your selfish and uh, we had so many visitors in that uh, in that month uh, and then here a picture from above about uh, queuing up during the day that um, it's a thousand visitors uh, per hour uh, that we could extend it and that it uh, became like a, a markstone of the of the time it was nice to see that the African Post uh, also somehow loved it. And then after this kind of uh, super art architecture, and now these kind of uh, elements became like a perfect excuse also to visit uh, towns. And somehow Detroit is also doing that. It leads now to a discussion. I want to see, show you the, what is happening. What we call the Bovenstad, the upper city, actually a new place for social housing. Um, here's some sketches of that, uh, uh, of that attempt, if we could do that in uh, more places. And this is what uh, I showed before. This is what it is now. And uh, so the proposal is to, do, uh, to make escalators and uh, soon to put that in and then to have a public uh, roof. But also to do that in the central station, newly built uh, by uh, Adrian Reuser, 
finally you get also somehow like a nice roof. But the theater, good destination. Well, the department store, wow, now we can uh, go beyond that. With our town hall, yes, also the mayor has to help. And also this uh, towers uh, by this developer, you can connect. And it becomes also for the vanilla uh, factory a tool to, uh, to go further for the Dutch Architecture Institute to do something in the end. And also Rem uh, Koolhaas could help a little bit uh, to make his roof. I did it in the past to, uh, to work on that. And also the next Rem could be participating. Also hipsters, no problem to have involved. Also the dance palace has a, a destination. Also this uh, connection can be made. And gradually I could believe of a like, second layer in town that also my client would accept to do that. And also I could add that to our market hall. And this is how it is now. Uh, due to Corona, we couldn't do the public event uh, because of the European Song Festival that was exposed, uh, where we would celebrate this uh, with a series of these uh, elements. It will be now in the next spring, uh, depending on the COVID situation again. But that's the aim then to invite you for the next step in this roof life. Then I go on with the next say, piece of art in that way to, uh, to add that to the city, the pot, the depot in the museum park on this very spot in town next to the Boymans, from Mu uh, uh, Boymans Museum from Beuningen Museum where uh, in the park uh, of OMA uh, which is flooded the last time which caused some problems uh, because uh, of changes in climate and that also affected the museum uh, the neighboring and uh, made it completely wet so the Monets were completely wet so how to make a new space so initially they said, let's make a storage of, of, uh, of art, but then put it outside of the city. And we have tried and ultimately successful to get it back into the city and to make even a storage, and there will be a lot in the future, to make that more accessible and use it actually as a pride device. So also to see it and to go inside, go through the racks. And, uh, and uh, so where to do that? Because on this side, we have to keep it open. That's the program that we developed uh, uh, with the client. Quite a block in a park, hmm, people would hate that. So what to do, make it round so that you can walk around, make the footprint small so that you don't go into the Dutch waters, but make it a floating device without almost uh, no foundation. And uh, so it touches Dutch earth, if you call it earth, it's mud, uh, then uh, uh, how to uh, uh, finally, and then you en enlarge the, the, uh, the roof on top with the panoramic view, uh, and then you can walk around. We replaced the trees that were there on the, uh, on the roof so that we compensate basically our act of infiltrating in a park, which is a vulnerable issue. I know that and understand that, but uh, how to, to, to do that. So this was the first act that we have a better place to, ex to live together. So here it's, it's part of say a, a series of gardens that make the park. So we make an extra garden, a beautiful garden in this way with and like, so, like on the second device to make a mirror everywhere so that uh, uh, that we can look around the corner, look to ourselves, here look around the corner, look to more skies uh, and to so now to have, to have a good relationship with the park. I know there are not so many windows in a storage, only on the ground floor for a cafe and only uh, the roof terrace and in between it's quite uh, dark, it's kind of mine that you can see. And this would be then the perspective that we offer to the city. And, the discussion went very well with the, with the, uh, and, um, uh, and they accepted that. So here an image, how you go inside, how you can go to the central void, uh, looking to all the art that can come out of, out of all the species. You walk day and night there, you walk around it, you see into the archives, and the archives themselves are beautiful, the storages, the depots, uh, where uh, this art can be not curated almost. It's like you do the curation is what this museum is saying and then ending up in our replaced forest uh, where the art can be exhibited in a specific other way. So another image from the site, how it will be there, how I come closer, how I see myself and how I, in the mirrors, how I look further to the horizon of the park and of the Netherlands and into the sky where I can ultimately find this Fata Morgana of trees of the, the and that is the object that we give then to the city. So it's nice to uh, see, and uh, it's not opened uh, yet. Uh, um, give me a second. It is uh, uh, here, you can see some films on how it is now there. Uh, it will be opened in September, uh, next September. We had a kind of small opening now to celebrate the, the rough structure. Now the art comes in, um, very precious, and how you have that effect that is somehow uh, promised, I do hope, 
and that you can start to understand the the, uh, the relationship of this object uh, programmatically but also visually and conceptually with uh, uh, with the city so how to to go further in that way is uh, to show you one detail we are now working on this is the door so um, it slides open and, and closes and make a perfect mirror when you're inside or when you're outside and uh, like James Bond uh, somehow you would uh, enter uh, this space trying to make that uh, that piece uh, therefore as strong as possible uh, we walk now with the lift upstairs in this mine uh, you come to the roof where we made this forest of uh, birch trees and uh, and how the object is now there and I can't wait for the for the true opening in September at that moment also we uh, work with Pepi Lotti Riest, an artist who makes this projection and I want to show that because it is um, or it brings also the building in night to this kind of three-dimensional projection or panorama of the city so here it is how she will show a jungle uh, flowers uh, and she's very known she's a Swiss artist very 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 good in that and how that will turn into an upside down feeling so it test of a couple of weeks ago with this film uh, where you see how when you project how it is above you and how the flowers and the animals are like uh, 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 approaching you in a three-dimensional way and that makes a this here you hear Pepe Lotti on the other side <laughs> how that will uh, how that will become so some uh, of the reactions so uh, the Rotterdam is starting to like it as the next piece of its collection uh, it has pulled attention to China also because of their uh, say archiving and storage what that could uh, mean and the New York Times uh, said in its article that actually the skyline of Rotterdam do, do this building is nicer because it's prolonged and extruded than the one of Manhattan so that is a good sign let me continue to I take you to Mannheim uh, in the, what happens there there's also how to be artist or how to work with artists and how to turn it into, uh, uh, say, as a tool of urbanism. Mannheim is a, is a place uh, somewhere in the heart of, uh, uh, of Europe. Actually, it's the center of Europe, but they don't know it. And uh, all the fast speed trains uh, cross uh, Mannheim and uh, they should use that. So the city looks like this. It's a complete sprawl. Uh, it could be uh, also somewhere like California or uh, like on the East Coast uh, where you don't know where a town starts or where towns uh, ends in that way. So Mannheim is composed out of the same kind of matter everywhere. It is, uh, uh, it is this, uh, what they love. And uh, only white houses everywhere. Uh, these are the majority of the streets of uh, Mannheim. So extremely boring and uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean Germany. They want to be safe, and uh, and they they keep uh, everything the, the same. What happens now is uh, these five five six uh, yellow pieces are the former uh, U.S. bases. Uh, they're not only in Mannheim. They're also in Nuremberg. They're also in Kaiserslautern. So all over. And uh, at this moment, uh, the Obama government started to uh, discuss uh, with Merkel in order to uh, to sell it. Uh, basically and to give it back to well, give it back is not the, the proper answer but to sell it back to the to Germany so I will I could be one of the urbanists to help that operation to to set the price basically uh, by density by functions it was a re very reasonable uh, project and a very reasonable uh, process and um, which we came uh, like the last year to a conclusion I take you to one example the Franklin Benjamin Franklin uh, village that looks like this um, so it's made out of barracks um, it's uh, the same everywhere uh, and um, it was also a place uh, that was uh, uh, dedicated uh, to to refugees for the last year so as you know Merkel wanted to facilitate that and, 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 I, and I appreciate that enormously so here you see an image of it how while working on as a master planner on this um, on this plan how to deal with um, with this influx, uh, this uh, well, almost hundred thousands of uh, of uh, of uh, people to house them with the Red Cross in it, and not to scare off uh, uh, developers that are normally very traditional in 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 its way. And now we found a formula somehow 
uh, to that uh, yeah that one third will stay, other third goes to other places, and uh, and find is an economy or jobs for uh, for this. Uh, group to do that and to live together with also the other inhabitants that come in this place. So even you can see that they've used my image to uh, to be part of this uh, operation. Uh, welcome to house and uh, welcome home this is what it uh, was the campaign was about. So the urban plan looks like this, uh, um, how um, many investors can take part of it and they can do it uh, in their own way. I will not completely deeply go into that, but this is the situation of the last uh, month. You will see that we keep uh, one third of the buildings and uh, uh, no even more. It's like uh, almost 50% and the other uh, transform that not only as a piece of memory, but also like uh, as a sign of uh, sustainability. But the others we had to negotiate uh, with the investors to make, uh, say, new pieces uh, of urbanism. I think this will lead to a beautiful, say, collage of history and future uh, in uh, that way of respect uh, uh, to both uh, directions. So here the process, uh, how it's now undertaking, how we sort all the material. And here, uh, this is uh, for one of my projects. In that way, I keep all the all the rubbish um, in the best tradition of the of the Second World War to, to make this kind of what you call trümmerhügel. So make a kind of a hill of the all the uh, rubbish out of that and then, then here we make the new roads and um, and i will go into the the center center looked like that a huh? uh, uh, very american based uh, like element so i've never seen so many zebra paths in my life never seen so many uh, 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 barbecue places as in uh, this place so we store them we keep them and i will do something with it so here uh, this is what it was this is what it is now in the center. Here we discuss uh, with many people, with the mayor, and how to do that. We walk around. You see my trimmer, my 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 debris uh, that I collect, and I try to turn it into a, into a, a complete hill, so that there's one uh, place where we can have a view over the city. And I put with this Lidl, this ugly supermarket that uh, they make in Germany. I um, put that below, and I skip the facade. So that's uh, then done. And uh, here, food carries the hill. Here, uh, how it looks like in the model with the high rises that we are also making. I'll go back to that. So, what's the plan? This is the existing. We do a, a couple of steps. First, we cut a street through it. Uh, we call it the Europe axis, uh, which is a meridian from north to south. As you can see here on the right side, uh, uh, this detail. And we cut all the existing buildings so that you have a beautiful, say, uh, section literally to the building. And uh, here it's under construction, that section of it. And that ends also with a piece of art by Olafur Eliasson, where, of course, he loves infinity and that we can uh, continue this, uh, this uh, direction. So with him, uh, I made basically this axis. Second element is the plaza. The plaza is here in the front. It's a church and we turned it into a, a, a mixed church, so also Islamic and uh, also Hindu will be all in and uh, we dig the foundations to uh, make that uh, possible. So that's the next project that will come uh, soon in that way. You see the image of it uh, called the Spuren Suche of the area. Next is the hill, as I explained before, uh, the, the collective viewpoint that we are creating with the Lidl below. How it's now uh, made into a building by this uh, structure with the walls, with the, the earth and the debris, and then put on top of this the debris and also a lifted house, uh, one of the, say, the old American houses to, uh, to have it floating on top of it uh, 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 in a mirror uh, style over this hill. Here, the, the, the axis that cuts through, that opens, the uh, reveals the supermarkets, and then the floating house on top, uh, and then the journey from the bottom to the top. And it's just the facades, how it will be there. So you can visit that uh, next year, here it uh, starts the construction, uh, the last. Then we continue, I want to have density around it, around the center. So we made, uh, we could make it possible like four towers, not too high uh, in this area. And we, ex we discussed uh, uh, how can we make a family? They can be abstract, like tombs. Uh, we had a discussion, can we turn it into heads, let's say, or the four, uh, generals of uh, of the caserne to have them there, but that was too much, too much referring to uh, to a piece of the U.S. So uh, can we make words with an artist that loves love uh, in that way? They found that too much, but we ended with home. 
in the from Heim and home, and that re, that is like mm, commemorizing, I think, the the Merkel's attempt to make uh, Germany into a home, and she loves the project at the moment to uh, that that is done. So this is home uh, surrounding the hill with the four um, done by different architects. Uh, here the H by uh, a young German architect, the O by S, uh, with the, the pop podium inside and the stair that goes down, the M uh, by S with a tennis field on the roof as an entrance place to Mannheim, uh, and the E by Albert Speer, the former, say, uh, son of the, uh, of the former Nazi uh, uh, architect that also participates in this operation that, that brings together this, uh, this collection. And um, for the O, just to make it more clear uh, how it will be, we use the old barracks, we cut them with the two axes, we make stairs uh, to, uh, to the O, the pop podium, uh, we turn it into the silhouette, and, uh, and how this, uh, with the plaza that surrounds it because of laws and then with the inhabitation of the O, uh, that is what it wants to be. And also this uh, with the stair and the O, it is starting uh, start construction. Um, so here pieces that are more than only architecture that become like tools for urbanism. I end uh, today's talk, uh, the coming say uh, uh, 15 minutes with Marseille. Marseille is in the southern part of France. It is uh, here how you fly over it and then see Marseille below on the Mediterranean. Um, it is a port town. It is a very hectic town. Um, it's not like Nice. It's a, it is another kind of nice, I would say, or like kind of Nice. It's a, what, what this is. Um, you might have read it in the magazines, like here in the, in the art magazine and art. Uh, that um, wrote articles about this Biennale. It's uh, called Manifesta. It's uh, once per two years in another city in Europe. And uh, where uh, this time I could co-curate uh, the, the Biennale. And uh, what is nice that this, uh, that this is one of the only Biennales that was uh, opened in that way. Not completely as we thought because of COVID, but still we could do that. Um, it was not finished and I will show you what is the plan and what you uh, could have seen if you would have visited it or go to the website. You see some of the pieces, especially the bridge here on top is important. I will come back to that later. So there are different examples and also the new graffiti that is done here in a robotized manner and uh, the, the, webs, the, the apps that we did to, to paint your own graffiti are parts of that uh, project. So this is the base of the, of the Biennale. So I thought that would be wise, and the manifest is open for that, to see it as a, uh, the, the Biennale, not as a, that you go into the museums, but as a piece of urbanism. And this book uh, tries to explain um, uh, that. And it's a, uh, you can buy it now on Amazon, etc. So what is this story? So here you see that story, and it takes you along for a moment. So I start, of course, with a, with a pamphlet. And that is uh, that I see uh, that the city is uh, like a puzzle, which is uh, of all the, the things that happen, and that I want to turn it into a mosaic. Why this from puzzle to mosaic is a constructive uh, proposal. Here's some images of uh, uh, Marseille during COVID times of uh, this puzzle, stairs, uh, stations, uh, uh, bridges, uh, weird buildings, lots of graffiti. I think it's, uh, it's in that way the, the the top of gravity in the world um, next to Detroit and uh, that goes over it everywhere. Lots of different kinds uh, of uh, say people that live in this place. Lots of infrastructure that is pretty stupid uh, uh, sometimes and uh, uh, old and new are, are closely together. As you, this sketch was the first one that we did on the right side, showing how to interfere in this puzzle, how to show the puzzle and how to uh, create a base for interventions for artists uh, to, do, uh, to do that. Uh, it starts with an observation, uh, what they call the mindset of Marseille, the MM, uh, in uh, that way done with the Y factory and with MVRDV. That means that um, uh, there is a scenography um, to use a word to, uh, of making an agenda for the biennial, but also an agenda for the city at the same moment. Such an agenda is composed out of more targets. Here on the left, you see there is a target from the global perspective, climate change, 
poverty issues. And that, that is, uh, there's an agenda from the European agenda. The, uh, Europe is divided in North and South in, uh, in a very strong way. And there is a very strong local agenda between rich and poor and between port and non-port. That leads to uh, the analysis and with hope, what should it be? Such an agenda can say the targets of it. Can Marseille then become prosperous, green, etc.? We can continue and say, how is this already there? That's the puzzle that is in the, in the city, in the analysis. And we do that by different ways of viewing to say, how far is Marseille? Uh, one is uh, uh, the, uh, the Marseille moments. These are the maps. No, these are the talks, excuse me, with people. Marseille maps make the comparison uh, with, uh, with other maps of other cities uh, to do that. And then we can bring it to concepts, to ideas with many people by students, art academies, as we did, and with, uh, say, all the districts in the city. And that leads together as an overlap to Le Grand Mosaic, the Great Mosaic. To, um, so what is there? Let me give you some examples of this book. Here, I will take you to the Marseille moments. This is where we start to discuss with many voices. That's what I like in Detroit also. You have so many different people that say something in that way. And here you see the series of these voices where we talked with. And that, that can be an, a researcher, architect like Marion Serre, who uh, talks about city in her way and paints it in a drawing like on the right side. I can uh, talk with, uh, in this case, by Tahmida Mohammed, who is a, a sound a musical school uh, device. And uh, she is, uh, has another kind of concept of the, of the city, its analysis and its needs. If I go then to the, uh, to the uh, main director of uh, Olympique Marseille, the soccer uh, team, then I get this kind of city out of his hands, etc. The next step is maps, making maps. Why maps? Because they say something about Marseille. Here on the left side, you see, for instance, one of the specialties of, of Marseille. They have the biggest amount of dead-end streets, Anpas. I come back to that later. If I compare on the left side Marseille with other cities in Europe, uh, then of the same size and with a harbor character, then they say something. They, I can give, uh, so we did that with scientists and uh, with different universities. And in this case, for instance, uh, uh, if you see what city is the closest to, uh, to the sea, of port cities even, the Marseille beats everybody. It is fantastically situated. Second element, if you look to natural areas that say parks are, the reserves that cities have, then of all the cities, Marseille is by far the most natural city. You don't know it, but it's there. And if you then look to uh, other components like uh, this one about health, uh, then it is uh, maybe it has not the best facilities, Marseille, but it has fantastic hiking paths everywhere. In, and uh, therefore, it's very healthy, Marseille, uh, to, to do that. If I look to the pollution, then I am sorry, but Marseille is super bad uh, because of the dust that goes uh, through it. And if I look uh, therefore to car usage, the Marseille is the top of the world almost. The Marseille love to drive because they are afraid to go outside, to be honest, I come back to that. If I then go to waste, uh, then of time, that also I mean the rush hour is insane. I mean, that then many other cities are super friendly. Even Marseille beats Napoli for do you believe that? That is a, and, but a, a lot of it has to do with the inequality. The poverty level of Marseille is huge. You see that in blue, the northern parts are extremely poor. And uh, with Napoli uh, and, and Valencia, Marseille is the poorest of Europe. It is also the unemployment rate is uh, very differentiated. The north, no jobs. The south, it has uh, in that way. And uh, there is a, a lot of homeless uh, when I compare that to other places in uh, Europe. It is quite some crime uh, also in the, the place, especially in the north. And, that, uh, and it is, on the other hand, it has a very bad also housing stock in uh, 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 the worst, I think, in, in Europe. So there is an, um, due to that, is also there's an urbanism of fear, I call. Uh, one, it has the highest amount of gated communities in Europe and just, just below Johannesburg in gated communities uh, as such. And you see that people protect themselves. It has also the highest amount of dead-end streets, as I said before, which are super dangerous. In, uh, uh, it is, um, uh, not, doesn't do much on protection. And it has a low level of uh, CCTVs uh, in the, 
Um, on the other hand, it's very energy energetic. It is um, just uh, the same as uh, Detroit in certain areas with the highest amount of graffiti in uh, Europe. Uh, there's a lot of foreign uh, uh, population in, involved. There is, a, uh, there is a lot of beliefs in it. There's a, and a higher amount of Muslims in, uh, in Europe uh, in that way. Uh, the housing prices are not so high, which has also a, a potential. That's what I would uh, say with that. Uh, and it, it has so many uh, boundaries, uh, I mean, uh, administrative, because of the puzzle, because of the differentiation between poor and rich, um, I mean, 111 communities for such a small city is insane. Uh, uh, and then the amount of NGOs is also insane. So that's Marseille. Beautiful and something to work on, I would say. So that, uh, expressing that, that was not so easy uh, in time. So sometimes when I expressed it, the main sponsor, the municipality, the mayor, was not happy with it and uh, killed the budget partly because of this research that came, came out of it. And now he's not re-elected. Now the Green Party has won, exactly maybe a little bit with the help of this pamphlet in a way. So we can be political, is what I would say. Then I take you that because this was the kind of base um, of the voices and of the maps and say of this the, uh, to think about well, how to intervene. And I hear the miracles come in. We started with the miracles uh, with students from the Art Academy in uh, Marseille, for the, from the Design Academy in Marseille, from the Fashion uh, uh, Academy, with also academies in, uh, in the Netherlands, and uh, uh, trying to explain what they could do and to dream a little bit how they would intervene based on this observation. So you see some of them working in this picture. So we use Google Maps uh, like on top as a stage set and then make a huge model out of uh, it and, and then people could explore that. Here you see the Google Map. Uh, we started in this hall in the very center, build up this uh, model. And I I'm still love it to have this, uh, this sunset over uh, Marseille and to see what students uh, consider as important projects at, uh, in that way. So these are the ideas uh, of that. And I will, they made them in the model, but they also showed it in a kind of collages, of, say before and after, uh, to uh, illustrate a little bit easier for you what that is. Uh, so this is placed in the book, the before and after. Here you see one example. Uh, these are quarries in, uh, in Marseille. These quarries caused a lot of dust and are the source, one of the main sources of pollution at that moment. So one uh, student say, uh, and is working on it at the moment to make simply houses. Cheap things, just uh, put them in um, and then throw them over this and start to, to work on this dust uh, by plantation, uh, by water uh, management in that way. So this is one of the projects of the, the, of the manifesta that would take place. Second uh, project that came out of uh, some group of students that said, this is beautiful. But I want to illustrate the, the tracks just by a paint, by a phosphor paint with mini lights that would show this potential. I think this crackle or this uh, is like, you know, man, this is like celebrating Cristo uh, somehow who unfortunately died. But that was like a, an, an attempt to, uh, to, uh, to make that uh, as an activation of it. Another group is doing on this highway, which ends in a cul-de-sac, to transform it also with paint into simply a biker's lane. I think a I mean, beautiful project to uh, celebrate uh, the city. Or to transform this uh, main street, classic Napoleon uh, Marseille, into a jungle as another uh, option that uh, uh, would be, was, is a part of the, of the projects that are done. Or to make the, the biggest zebra path in the world uh, by using basically a whole district as a zebra path uh, to confuse the drivers and to uh, turn it into a collective uh, space. Or with Olympique Marseille, the soccer uh, games. We made a new stadium. We have seen it maybe in the Netflix series on Marseille. But to, to make, uh, oh, sorry, that will come back uh, later. But, uh, and, but also to, to make an advertisement, this project is about metro lines. To show where we need more stations uh, by indicating that they are not there yet. And they would, especially in the poor north, more metro lines could, uh, should come there. I go further on uh, this uh, example where a uh, year the uh, this students want to uh, to make uh, porches uh, towards the entrance gates and to, to en enlarge them uh, where they are in the city and to uh, to manifest the distinction between uh, behind the two the two gates 
or this one is also beautiful. You see a dead end street, a cul de sac. In, uh, one, uh, they study of um, uh, a small group that wanted to continue the street in uh, this richer uh, area and convince them by doing it. Um, in the end, it was a kind of a video projection uh, on the beginning of the street to, to, uh, to do it. But I think it's a beautiful project. Or here, the old the museum that was built in 2013, uh, really, uh, really, and to connect it also to the harbor so that this harbor would be less privatized and usable. And that spans then to this dike uh, over the harbor so that you can use that dike and it's not privatized anymore by the, some kind of uh, capital uh, uh, group that is uh, over there. Then we can transform this harbor also into a beach, into the Capacabana of the poor in, um, uh, by making this simply sand and some pavement in that way and get some extra hotels and housing on that way. And also to close some of the, of the basins of the port. The port is not used anymore. They don't say it, but, that, uh, but then you have, I think, the best swimming pool in town uh, and that to celebrate the manifesta at that very moment. Or to turn one other piece of the pool into what we call a calanque, like a, an area where you can almost squat it and turn it into a free land of, uh, of uh, Marseille. Or to this elitist uh, tourist destination, transform it from a, a marina into a, 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 a place where you can live, but also in a place where you can swim uh, instead of it and turn, make an other kind of port out of that. Or a project where, uh, where you could make more housing uh, that have a view on the sea by these new mountains of housing that could be uh, made on this. Or, they, or cool the city also with new kind of uh, nozzles, clouds, and why not surrounding then the churches with clouds so to, to, to mystify basically uh, the monuments of the past. And then maybe on top of this mountain that it's uh, so specifically dedicated to Catholicism that there, of course, the Grand Mosque and the new Hindu temple could be uh, positioned in a kind of beautiful collection. And, uh, as, uh, or then looking to the coast, I, I love this project where one group made a kind of welcome uh, uh, building, uh, the, well, the series of towers that would say something to Africa on uh, that way. And then, yeah, if I look to the other direction, maybe we can skip the boats in the future of, uh, of it and make a, a bridge to uh, Alger, uh, to Al Algeria, so that this old con colonialistic confusion um, is transformed into a, a kind of a celebration of uh, the future as such. It would take uh, from Marseille, via Palma de Mallorca to uh, Alger, and uh, we never have to fly anymore by this bridge. But also insert in the life of the poor by, by the slabs, which are the longest in the world, to give them a, a, like a, a roof life. So to get rid of the drug dealers and the, uh, that control this environment and turn it into a collective space. And to transform this also into a more like individualistic, uh, uh, no, not individualistic, like, like personalized environment by this project together with uh, the community. I love this one, uh, how to transform it into this uh, nice slabs. Then I come back to uh, the Pic Marseille, which has now this emblem but actually it would be so much nicer to add towers around that social housing. I can sit on my balcony and I can celebrate with, Mar with Olympique uh, the, the future of soccer in that way. And finally, of course, also the mayor should help. And uh, so one student, uh, an artist made this proposal to, uh, to use maybe our stairs, but to celebrate also the room of the next, say, gathering on that roof, to propose a kind of other kind of way of governing uh, is what it says. Then we continue uh, with here, with identifying all the communities by sculptures that come off the roofs and turn it into the numbers. You see the voices of uh, Marseille at that moment. And I, of course, I end, end for this moment with, of course, this beautiful, but macabre Netflix sign. Netflix wanted to, because when they made this series, they wanted to have one piece where they like uh, Los Angeles, they would show what Marseille is about and put these letters there. Marseille hates it because it's a, uh, uh, they, they, but, but, but somehow it's nice. So the students uh, propose this device so that it becomes a tool to say to people, what is Marseille? Marseille is, and then it can imagine that uh, from there it becomes active, alive, average cameras that we can start to communicate and uh, say there's a, a 
perspectives of uh, Marseille and that every day it would say something about what is happening in the Viennale and turn it into uh, like ideas how uh, how people should be there and how uh, the agenda should be there and what is missing or what is coming and that would uh, lead to this kind of uh, say uh, consideration uh, is what this uh, tool is wrapping up in the collection of interventions of uh, the city. Then I come to the next step, because this was the first inventory of the manifesto. We gave uh, quite some money to an uh, to, uh, uh, initiative of, um, or to bring all the NGOs together uh, by Tariq Ghezali and uh, Joke Quintens to, uh, to imagine Marseille on mo in motion. A tour, the tour la possible, uh, a tour of, of all the possibilities with people, um, to talk with them, with any neighborhood, to make mini games to understand uh, the, the potential power, to put that on drawings and maps, uh, to celebrate that drawings, uh, whatever it is, of, it is green roofs, uh, whatever ideas is that, and put that on the model. And to see it as a startup, uh, together with uh, 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 Van Rijbroek, uh, this beautiful writer from Belgium, who uh, the thinker that is uh, uh, the master in bottom-up urbanism, uh, who was, was also in uh, Detroit for uh, for a time, to uh, to make that into a new way of governing, and that leads then to the mosaic that this manifesto is about. To places where you go, where you have this map of destinations, a map that's composed out of the maps of the people that have been made here in this diagram, maps that are made, made out of the, uh, the, the ideas of the students, like in this one, and the ideas of the Tour de Possible, and, uh, uh, which is in this case, and that leads then to this mosaic, uh, with this confetti, that, uh, and, and then I, I think I can complete um, my story uh, of today with like uh, this uh, relationship of art and urbanism in a concise manner. It is super nice. I can advise you to make biennales, but biennales that goes beyond the static. And with this, say visits to, uh, to pieces of Europe, I hope that I can uh, give you some input on the relationship and the agenda, both of, ur of urbanism and, architect and art, of that art can help, of that urbanism should be, according to me, uh, conceptual and artistic, and change then the city through cultural projects. Urbanism comes itself in art, learning from you, from artists uh, uh, in that room for the freedom that you have, for the criticalness that you have and should have, for the intellect that uh, we have to train ourselves uh, into it and to bring it to a conceptual level and, be, uh, and talk about that concept and what it can then abstract. And with that, I do hope to give you that perspective. Thank you very much for this attention. And just a little bit more than one hour. Great, thank you, Vinny. That was an amazing tour through your ideas and projects. I have to get out of the sun for a second here. <laughs> thank you so much. That was, that was just fantastic. And we can take some questions from, from people who are in the audience if you want to um, type into the Q&A. Um, I'll read those out while people are, are typing in. I Just some, uh, some observations I had. I mean, I was really struck by this kind of sense of generosity that, that you that you have in your work has in the in terms of the city in particular. I mean, you talked about thought it was really great the way you talked about the buildings as like as neighbors to each other, right? Like we move into a, a, an apartment, we have to develop relationships in new ways with new people, and that somehow anthropomorphically, the buildings in cities have have these relationships, and and the way that I, I feel like the, a lot of the work is is trying to make that more intimate is through boundaries, new sorts of boundaries, right? Like the market hall kind of turns things inside out or the stair takes you above over the building or the, the blue house on top, right? To rethink the boundaries spatially, the boundaries of the city is a way of trying to maybe making these new intimate connections. Even maybe back to Villa BPRO, I remember seeing that in the early days and it, like it, just a totally different conception of how we would work together in this by thinking about the section. So is that something, I mean, two parts of the question, maybe one is how do you, is that part of your process in different cities is to try to think about what that spatial condition is like? And then I'm also curious about now in COVID, if that's had, had any effect on how you think about uh, those boundaries and, and levels of intimacy in the city in, in any new ways. Okay, two, there are two types of questions uh, what you pose. Uh, 
one about uh, uh, generous, being generous in a way. It's the easiest part, to be honest. It's like uh, uh, um, I cannot understand um, that, cert that there was a culture in the 90s of uh, star architects that didn't do that. That is, uh, for me, completely... Um, um, uh, it is if one generation missed the boat uh, by being so egoistic and so... Uh, uh, so selfish, uh, and that we have glorified as a as a society that uh, uh, that glorification of the, of the of the ego, and that we have um, uh, put say uh, pieces of like art, uh, star architects everywhere uh, uh, in, uh, as a collection of uh, uh, instead of um, uh, instead of say yeah creating a space uh, n not only for him or for her. Um, with, with all the talent they have, but also for them and for uh, for for those that are in those projects are outside sometimes. And um, I mean, I understand that um, uh, that that's, um, so it was also a tool on those uh, days. But I'm, I'm I see also now a generation that is kind of fed up with that. that the mayors are also contributing to other directions. We have bigger problems uh, these days than before uh, in terms of climate uh, agenda and actually the duality of rich and poor is, uh, not, has not been become smaller. Uh, uh, the, the growth of the planet is uh, still there in all its uh, means. So uh, in, uh, the, the desire to collaborate is, uh, is there. You don't see it sometimes under certain kind of regimes or in certain kind of... Uh, uh, leaderships, but in uh, but on the other hand, more and more there is a conviction to do that. So um, uh, on this kind of collaboration, that means that the, indeed the in between is important, as you say, uh, between uh, buildings and how do one relate to each other? What do they cause? And uh, and how more in betweenness, in a way, in a differentiated way. Uh, let me be honest; it should, it's not neutral. Is an um, uh, because that we should not confuse. Uh, the neutrality is an, is another uh, issue, but that they can the speaking out of of two elements that they create this relationship, and therefore also when you're in between them, it becomes you feel like part of it and creates actually an extra space due to that. That's then you. That's what it uh, is. I hope to celebrate that in the in the next book. It's called uh, We Go, where we study uh, how we are egoists always, but how we we uh, we can force no, we can help, we can push. It's a wrong word, but at, um, each other, so that we can collaborate more and under pressure, maybe under kind of uh, also under ideologies that egoism becomes egoism, and that is uh, uh, you will see that book in about two and a half months uh, coming on the market uh, where we explore that both architecturally and mainly as well urbanistically, and that is a uh, so generosity becomes then a, a tool uh, as such, almost like a like a uh, um, like a pamphlet that, that is uh, uh, so that would be the next pamphlet and i will show it next time when i back in detroit um then how does it work with um, with uh COVID? I, I i'm getting a little bit tired to be honest with that question because it's like every day i have to ask that question we already like speculating a lot uh, but despite that of course that's a way of how we uh, how we survive uh, because of course that kind of in between causes a certain kind of intimacy you're completely right and I think, do think that intimacy is important because it is it confronts me with you and it confronts us with us so there's a uh, and it leads also to actually a very nice cohabitation of safety in uh, uh, bringing into the streets so in intimate streets are actually uh, if they're open up to uh, more directions uh, all fine I, mean, I, I know the films uh, that you guys make so that there is a uh, but that is a, is a super important tool i try to get rid of uh, as many say width in in streets uh, another example in bordeaux at the moment in construction maximum 10 meter wide streets to create that intimacy so but we are confronted of course then with the 1.5 meter law that is there uh, currently in europe that means that the capacity is reduced for that kind of streets you see it in shopping black Friday, uh, last uh, Friday was terrible in the European cities because it was a completely stupid idea to have that uh, organized and to, uh, to see what happened uh, in it. Uh, the capacity is... Uh, and so we have a software now to calculate 
temporary, I would say, this uh, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, feeling. But I, I do think that, um, uh, let's say, after COVID, yes, I, I, I will go into the intimate zone again. I mean, I want to, I like, uh, 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 I, I like to be not in a kind of me too environment, evidently, but to be uh, with people. So I have to think also then about an artist because that's the talk of today. And I look to Abramovic and Ulay when they made this beautiful installation of two naked person uh, and that you have to crawl in between them as a visitor in the museum. And you were uh, 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 like that. And uh, so in, uh, in the development, I mean, in the next say art show that we're trying to do in Eindhoven for the design week, I want to, I'm going to close two streets and the, uh, the crossing, I put a, uh, a tourniquet, a t uh, what is it called, a revolving door. And uh, so I think that would be so wonderful that when you are shopping and you have to go through your revolving door and you see in the eyes of someone else. That is, uh, so that, that could be, we couldn't do it now in October in the Dutch Design Week, uh, obviously because of COVID. But it's, um, it will be on the next uh, festival to see that and to explore then the, say, the, the constructive parts of in, intimacy and uh, uh, um, yeah, that I, I think is still a very important tool uh, to, and there's much more to, to say uh, about, about COVID and uh, now and what do we take along with that is uh, uh, that's also in your, embedded in your question, but I, I think guess we are not going into that too much uh, because yeah, of, of course I can make a lecture, another lecture about the green dip, uh, another book that comes where we cover all our buildings with trees and how that is now helped by COVID. I cannot uh, say differently. Uh, there's a, uh, now more investors uh, are doing it in, in uh, there are more mayors that do a taxation system to make it possible. Uh, in, and uh, uh, there, there are new studies coming up with different universities to research species that filter air that, uh, that, are, uh, that somehow um, uh, are helping also not to get dengue or uh, to get no, too many mosquitoes or et cetera. So this whole composition, uh, uh, that I must say that COVID has, has helped that part to, uh, to bring that deeper. Another element which I didn't discuss today is um, about what helped COVID is the role of research. I think uh, that uh, uh, we believe, I mean, not everybody, but most majority believes more now in scientists uh, and, um, and, and uh, need, I think politically, I mean, in many countries, uh, they use scientists also to explain their policies. I think, wow, what a relief that right. again, science yeah. is on the agenda and yeah. that we can, uh, and that, that is, uh, I think, so important that also for your school or for uh, like, what can we contribute? And somehow I, I talked about it today in the lecture, how can things contribute to society? But we, it could be a research project. In, uh, we can do more research projects more than ever. Uh, and um, that's also different from the 90s uh, where architecture was not into research at all. It was, uh, yeah. it was uh, just making beauty. And it was, uh, uh, and that is, uh, so this COVID time has again opened our eyes that yeah, things can help. Uh, it is uh, uh, it's the the true internet of things that some people say in their words uh, uh, that 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 I am facing uh, in a kind of constructive way. Right, right. There's a question uh, also from a students uh, in terms of driving concept and design. Is architectural detailing overrated? <laughs> oh, that it went to quite conflict and design. Did I understand that correctly? In terms of driving, like <clears throat> in terms of what's driving concept and design. Okay. Is architectural detailing overrated? Or, or architecture is overrated. Detailing, detailing. So. Uh, oh no, yeah, no, no, no. Detailing. Yeah. It's uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. I, I didn't talk much about craftsmanship uh, today. That is, uh, uh, and it's also a, an important tool, also in art. Huh? You, um, um, when we want to make something sublime, then you have to be also a perfect detailer. Uh, that is, uh, um, for me, that's simply normal honestly making good designs or good details is a need they, they because they 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 support the concept uh, and the content uh, of it um but in that order to be honest so okay. that is the uh, so the in that way the concept is more important and the, then uh, so i don't talk therefore that much today in that detail in that way i, I try to to show the construction of concepts the, the logic behind concepts. And I, uh, my guess is that everyone 
every designer and uh, uh, architect is so already ob uh, obsessed by detail that he or she will immediately uh, put that into position when they have a, a concept uh, in, in that way. And it's, uh, I also know that on the other hand, certain details can lead to, to concept. Eh? When it doesn't mean, uh, so from, there is a relationship from XL to XXS uh, that uh, goes down. On the other hand, if you, in, in, you find the superb detail, then also that uh, leads to a, a like shocking movement or an, in, an incredible, uh, say, change of, uh, of life or, or that could help maybe I mean, invent another toilet and you will be successful, I would say. Or you, an, another kind of um, um, a button to open your door and it, uh, you get more rich than uh, than than an architect. So there is. Uh, so they, they, it it depends a bit. It's a, the, the lecture of today was not about that. Uh, so I can imagine that. And I think when you go into the literature, uh, Barba, the book Barba is about that. About uh, find the sublime detail, and then you uh, will master the world. So there's a. Um, uh, uh, so I hope this explores a little bit the uh, the question. Um, and, um, and positions the question in uh, hopefully a kind of uh, illustrative way. Sure, I think it. I wonder if it came up too because of the. I was thinking in the blue, the blue house project on top of the building. On one hand, is it easier to detail a project like that, or or much much harder because it's all it's all sort of the same color, right? And to try to figure out to, to keep it that monochrome and and matte finish. Oh yeah, I, I give you then a detail for yeah. that uh, for that sublimity. Uh, it has no gutters, the house, because oh. uh, that, didn't, that didn't fit. So, and so you get a kind of crying house when it rains. And, but then how to, to bring the water uh, uh, over the edge and bring it to the details, uh, how to make uh, the window in that way. You need eyebrows, basically, to get the water away from the windows. So um, the, everything was like put into order to, uh, to avoid details somehow, because... Uh, there was no money left for making details. And, uh, and, and, and then that's why we decided also for with the monochrome. But then also to find the proper paint, eh? the, the, this polyurethane, four layers uh, thick, tested, uh, done with the uh, guys that normally make pools and to, uh, uh, to, uh, to turn that into the building. And uh, so that, that took also quite a while to get uh, the sufficient say, quality of that. And also how to repair a pool. Now you know how that, uh, uh, and how to do that by, by spray paint, basically. So to make the polyurethane into a, into a kind of, a, oh, to split the, the you, you have to put it in gas. And then while you spray, the gas has to go out. So that is what the poly, that was another test to do it. And uh, which was a beautiful test. We did it with, basically with a car, uh, guy that uh, normally make paints cars to uh, to to have the right pressure of uh, of the of the spray paint to do to do that in uh, in this way so it was quite some collaboration to uh, to get into this uh, moment so innovation is there that's true but in this case you can also say that the concept led to innovation of polyurethane and led to the uh, to also the concept to make a crying house uh, that can be sold to avoid gutters. I mean, it's one of the most ugly things that are in in our architecture, and uh, uh, and to turn it uh, uh, and to give it actually back to nature, to evaporation, also to 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 to, build, to facades that are uh, that keep to be clean and fresh. That's also uh, to, uh, also in the poly polyurethane. There is a kind of uh, extra element that makes it uh, somehow gloss and that it, uh, you can easily spray it with some water to, to clean it when there is algae on it. So, nice question to, yeah. uh, to, to illustrate uh, this, uh, this observation of, uh, of the people that put, uh, the person that put this question yeah. forward. Yeah, it is, it's a great question. I think it uh, also helps, I, I love hearing more about the ways in which you collaborate, especially for like here in the Academy and Architecture and all the different MFA programs and that there's that feedback loop between art and architecture and, and how that then scales out to the, the level of the city. And that you, so you're learning from them as much as, as you know, them from you in terms of, of technique or, or, or even, you know, larger scale. Well, at the moment, it's quite a group of say artists in the, from the, on all levels that somehow are fascinated in a bigger scale. 
and that uh, but there's also a group that's highly into intimacy, but actually also from the perspective of the bigger scale. But uh, you can see that there are some of them are also very known. Eh? Uh, Olafur is one of them. But there is a uh, there is a there is a yeah there's a certain tendency among each other uh, to work on this, and I think it has to do simply that yeah. Uh, yeah, what what can you do? What, what what should we do in this planet? In, in, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's a question that many students will ask themselves, and to and what can I contribute to as a person to, uh, towards that? And some people want to believe in our service providers, which is fine. I mean, ninety percent of the architects are like that, but it's also like some pe people will become questionnaires and uh, or others become scholars and researchers. Uh, which also has to deal with the question mark anyway, but that is uh, so it, it puts a, yeah some this brings gives a weight to on our shoulders. What what shall we do? What can I do? And um, um, I hope that this illustrated a little bit by also today's lecture. Yeah, fantastic. No, it was really it was really great to think too for that to just think about what you know what's possible, all these possibilities, and all of the research that you showed. I thought had it made it feel like. There's a kind of lightness to that, like you can you can just test things out quickly, and, and you can create a whole discussion from that and, and see where it goes. But just in a in a very experimental way. I think lightness and depth are is a good combination of uh, the, so um, because if you would go deep deep and you lead it to a conclusion or temporal conclusion, it becomes light immediately afterwards. Because oh yeah. Uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, my research on uh, if I cover tree, uh, I mean, all the buildings in the world with plants, uh, then I found out uh, after a lot of research that I can reduce the temperature of the planet with one degree Celsius. I think, so, okay, th th that is the one liner that it becomes, and then it becomes somehow light. You just like, you just say it like that and it, it stays in your head. It's also, so the depth is some kind of celebrated in the lightness that comes afterwards. And, uh, that is connected to that for me that's a definition of concept mm. of the conceptual right right fantastic great well thank you so much we hope to uh, we'll be excited to see where the glass mural project goes and and hopefully have you here to visit in person when we can yeah that's good can you send me the recording we will yeah we'll send it to you. it's good for the uh, always to uh, for our uh, our store in uh, uh, Bart, in the, and I hope to see you soon, uh, Gretchen, and uh, others, and then um, live next time. Fantastic! Yep. If you, if you if you also be a little bit speed up with your uh, with your situation, then uh, then that can be sooner. Yes, that's <laughs> so, right. Yeah, we just all need our masks. <laughs> got you. No, it's okay. No, nice to nice to meet and to e meet, and then all uh, yeah. very soon. Okay. okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Take bye. care. Bye bye.